Hello, today with us we have one of my friends, one of the people who are closest to me and a person who gets really embarrassed with praise, so I'll just get that out of the way right now, <laughs> Miss Anvi Khanna. Um, Anvi, that speech out that was so energetic, it spoke to the interest of so many people and things that actually go unnoticed in the moving world. So, with you've been very vocal about, you know, the fine line between uh, belief and ignorance. My question to you is, Anvi, where do you draw that fine line between belief and ignorance? So, like I said in my speech, you know, the, the moment we start, the moment we get so entrenched in our beliefs that we are ready to condemn anything that anyone else says that is hmm. different from what we believe in, that is when it literally turns into ignorance. And, you know, I'm not only talking about this on a political or social level, this happens in so many places. Let's suppose there is one sportsman that you really support, hmm. and, you know, if, if you're such a strong believer in that person that if anything otherwise is said, you just, yeah. you just can't take it. Um, right. So, but again, you know, I really thought that this would resonate a lot at a political and social level. And um, like I said, the moment we are so clouded with our beliefs and we have this shielded perception hmm. that when anyone says otherwise, we're just like, you're wrong and you're stupid. That is when it turns into ignorance. And I think the line should be drawn the line should be drawn at a place where we understand that other people too can have mm. different beliefs. But while our opinion is ours, their opinion is theirs, and mm. we shouldn't, you know, be calling them names or calling mm. them out just for having different beliefs. And all of that, all of that wrongful propaganda, as I, I think it's safe to call it propaganda, all of that is propagated by the advent of social media, and you've been very vocal about that as well. So could you just reiterate um, something about? the social media element of propaganda. So um, this is interesting because I was, I was attending a conference a few days ago mm. and uh, we had this one speaker called Roger McNamee. Um, I hope that's the right name. But so he was an early investor at Facebook and he was an advisor to Mark Zuckerberg. And he explained how the algorithm has become so dangerous that it starts to show you two types of content. A is the content that makes you really, really agitated. Mm. And the second one is misinformation because ultimately their goal is for you to stay on that social media site for a longer time. Mm. And the more we see that content, the more we want to see similar content because you know it gets us thinking, it gets us agitated, and it gets us to speak out against it. So this is where social media and like so many people are taking advantage of that fact to mm. actually spread that propaganda on social media. But what makes this even more dangerous is the fact that we are falling for that trap. Mm. Um, so, you know, I talked about this in detail in my speech, you know, I talked about epistemic bubbles and echo chambers, and um, I think... There were caricatures too, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I, yeah, at one point, if you saw, there were literally, there was a caricature where people were condemning the whole existence yeah. of echo chambers. And I thought it was really interesting to talk about, because literally everyone is on social media. You are on social mm. media, I'm on social media. Who is not on social media Who is what the question should be. Media. Um, so this is a particularly dangerous topic and we're not even realizing this and I think everyone should be vocal about it at this point but it's, it's, it's sad that what the situation is turning to. About the crowd out there, there were so many people out there, lights were shining bright and you know, on the speaker, all eyes on the speaker, how was it like on the stage, you know, talking to those many people? expressing your opinions, is there still exhilaration about it? Are you still nervous about it? So, yeah, obviously, I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm pretty overwhelmed at the moment. And at the same time, um, it's a huge relief that everything went well. I think the speech went brilliantly. I think um, I portrayed what I wanted to in my very best manner. And I hope that, you know, people take the speech as an example to understand that we are going towards a very toxic and hateful <laughs> point in society and we should really work towards ensuring that that doesn't happen or doesn't go to a greater extent. And for parting remarks, if there are any two things you would like your speech to be remembered by, what would they be? I think the first thing would be the title. The title? <laughs> oh, the title, by the way. You've done wonders on the title. Is there someone who recommended you the name? Or um, okay, okay, so... <laughs> so... Um, when I was told that, you know, with the speech, you have something that the speech is supposed to have, which is called the title, um, I had like this mini panic attack because I was like, I can't think of a title to this you can't speech. can't think of a title. Who am I to, what am I supposed to say for this? Uh, so then I very, very impulsively picked up my phone and I called this friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. His name was Aryan Rakhi. Okay. And, um, Sounds like a great guy. <laughs> 
and then um, I was like, listen, dude, I need a name. I can't think of anything. This is the speech. Help me out. And then he was, he was going through the speech. And then at one point in the speech where I say, and um, anyone who says otherwise is wrong, naive, inexperienced, and is a clown. Mm -hmm. Then when he said the clown, he immediately said, don't be the clown. You shouldn't be. should be the title. And Damn, that sounds witty. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, this should be the case. Um, even though, you know, when a person sees the title, there would mm -hmm. be like 50 other things that you could think that the speech was about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I love this title a lot. Um, and I hope a lot of people come and see the speech just for the title, you know? Just for, just the, for the title. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Okay, that was on Vikano. <laughs>